Hey, Badger Buddies! Here are stories that supermarkets don't want you to know. Number two really sticks it to the man. <laughs> Number 12. In 2017, University of Arizona researchers sampled the bacterial content of 85 grocery store shopping carts across several West Coast cities. What they discovered is that those handles are absolutely teeming with germs. 13,000 bacteria per square inch to be exact, which is an order of magnitude higher than the bacteria levels in public restrooms. Shopping carts are like petri dishes of germs, bacteria, viruses, and all around nastiness. You might as well be pushing around a giant urinal cake. <laughs> Number 11. Have you ever heard of the term food reconditioning? It sounds like something that Stalin would do to the bourgeois class in Soviet Russia, but trust me, it's way worse. <laughs> food reconditioning is standard practice among grocery stores and food suppliers. It's the process of using intense heat to turn imperfect and contaminated food back into edible and profitable foods. The most disturbing way that food producers recondition is that they take full-blown expired and contaminated food, reprocess it, and throw it back on the shelves for sale. In 2011, the Washington State-based company Snowkissed Growers came under some heavy fire when applesauce packages that they had reconditioned came back teeming with brown, green, and white molds. Nine children in North Carolina became ill after eating the atrocious applesauce. No kiss, more like no kiss. Stupid. Pop quiz, hot shot. Grocery stores are notorious for mislabeling one of their products so that they can swindle more money from their customers. What product do you think that is? See if you can guess the correct answer in the comments below, and we'll let you know later on in the video if you're right. Number 10. Back in 2007, it was uncovered that for six years, the founder of Whole Foods, John Mackey, had been using a secret alias to write positive things about Whole Foods and himself on Yahoo Finance's bulletin board. This multi-millionaire business owner spent his free time bashing his competitors like grocery chain store Wild Oats, saying, quote, they are floundering and hoping to find a strategy to stop their erosion. Problem is the lack of time and capital." End quote. Oh, sick business burn, bro! Mackie would also throw himself some compliments, saying things like, I like Mackie's haircut. I think he looks cute. And Mackie looks like a model from Brooks Brothers. There's nothing sadder than writing an anonymous comment on your own videos about how cool your hair looks, which is why I get my mom to do it. Thanks, Ma. Number nine. In 2007, the Swedish grocery store chain ICA found themselves in the throes of some serious prosecution. A criminal investigation into four of their stores was launched after a television documentary revealed that the employees had been repackaging out-of-date ground meat and putting it back on the shelves. Through secretly recorded video, the documentary enraged the whole country who had been using the meat to make Swedish meatballs for years. Worse still, the videos showed employees picking up food off of the floor and repackaging that meat. The Swedish chef was quoted saying, Durky dargy, durky dargy. He was very upset. Two store managers were fired and the store's sales of ground beef fell by 50%, but their stakes have never been higher. Boom! Number eight. You know how when you're walking past the vegetables in the grocery store and you see them spray that mist onto the produce? We all assume it's because they want to keep their veggies fresh, but it turns out they're spraying down their lettuce with lies. The main reason that grocery stores missed their food is that it makes them shiny and more appealing to our senses, which of course makes us more likely to buy those items. And what's extra shady is that dousing the spinach with a bunch of water makes it weigh a lot more than if it were dry. 
It's a sneaky way to get customers to shell out more of their money at the register. Number seven, there are few things that are more irritating than buying a packaged food item from the store only to realize the packaging was designed in a way to make you think you were getting more food. This underhanded practice of misleading customers is standard among food producers. Not only is overpackaging tangential to theft, it contributes to the planet's growing waste problem. Best thing to do is stick with brands that you trust that package their foods with biodegradable material. Number six, grocery stores are the country's biggest pusher of high fructose corn syrup. Corn syrup was invented in the 1970s as a cheaper alternative to sugar. Supermarkets slang that stuff like their lives depend on it. It's in everything from bread to ketchup to cereal to marinara sauce. There's no escape because corn syrup is metabolized in the liver. It's easily converted into fat that just sticks on those hips. I had to employ all of my willpower not to make a corny joke here. I guess I'm using a kernel of wisdom. Oh, shucks. Number five. Here's a fun little secret. The fresh produce is actually ridden with germs. You know how you picked up and squeezed that peach to test its ripeness? Guess what? So did everyone else. You have no idea how many hands have touched that apple before you took it home. So remember to always thoroughly wash your plums. That's what she said. Number four, the evil geniuses over at the grocery store headquarters have designed checkout lines in a way to make you feel stuck. If you want to leave for any reason, there's nowhere to put down your basket and no way to turn around your cart. You have no choice but to submit to the line. Number three, there's a dark plot behind store-bought garlic bread. It's really just old French loaves that didn't sell. Grocery stores take those stale loaves, spread on some olive oil and garlic, and throw them in the oven. If you want to make sure you're getting the best garlic bread, the best thing to do is grab a fresh loaf from the bakery shelves, take it to the baker, and ask them to slice it and put the garlic right on there. Just about any store will slice a loaf any way you like. You just gotta ask. You can't get what you don't ask for. It's answer time. According to NPR, one in every three fish sold at a grocery store is mislabeled. Holy mackerel. Now there are many fish in the sea, but they don't all come at the same price. It's common practice among grocery stores to mislabel their cheap garbage fish like tilapia as something expensive like red snapper. The easiest thing that you can do to protect yourself from a fugazi fish is to buy the whole fish rather than just the cuts. When you're looking at the full body, it makes it much easier to make an accurate identification. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe. Hit the bell button to get notified of new videos, and we always appreciate a big thumbs up. Number two. Back in 2018, an Australian farm supervisor named Myat Trin lost her mind and went on a sinister produce rampage the likes of which the world has never seen. This wicked woman was fed up with the way her co-workers were treating her. And instead of doing the normal thing and quitting, Trin decided to start sticking hundreds of needles into hundreds of strawberries right before they were shipped off to Australia's grocery stores. That is some joker level maliciousness. People started biting into needle-filled strawberries up and down Australia, which resulted in a country-wide panic. Sales and exports of strawberries plummeted, which is actually pretty harmful to the Australian economy. That place runs on strawberries. Authorities eventually tracked Trin down and she faces 10 years in jail. I'm sure that we can all relate to Trin having to work with people she didn't like, but sticking needles into strawberries is no way to make a point. Ow! Number one. Grocery stores market sugary items directly at children. Cereal is 
Big business for grocery stores. It generates over $11 billion in annual revenue, and the cereal industry uses 816 million pounds of sugar each year. Children are basically sugar junkies, and there's nothing they love more than to start their day with a ride on the sugar dragon. Big Cereal knows that most parents would rather not buy this unhealthy meal for their children. So the sugar peddlers go right for the kids. Grocery stores will place sweet cereal on lower shelves so that they're closer to eye level with kids. This attracts their attention. And research has shown that making eye contact with the cartoon character on the cereal box makes kids more likely to want to buy the cereal. So the character is always drawn so that it's looking downwards towards the kids. You may not think that this is a big deal, but parents think it's super cereal. Thanks for watching, friends. I hope you enjoyed the video. We have a ton of these on the channel, so feel free to dive in for a nice binge session. Be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. Bye.